All right, so uh, this lecture is uh, part two of a, a series that I started uh, about a week ago. The first one was on more uh, principles of endgame uh, in terms of uh, sente, gote, reverse sente, double sente, uh, gote with a sente continuation, uh, stuff like that. You don't, you don't, you don't have to have had to uh, go to the previous lecture to uh, to get this one, but uh, it's uh, particularly useful if you're uh, in the uh, uh, I would say a uh, seven to eleven Q range. It would uh, be very useful to uh, take a look at the first one uh, before you go to this one. This one is going to be a uh, very uh, mathematically oriented, which is uh, basically what Yosei has to be. Yosei is uh, very unique uh, in compared to most other aspects of the the Go game, in that uh, basically it's uh, it's almost pure math. You know, you have to be able to find the moves, of course, but uh, you can say, okay, this move is six points and that move is seven points and therefore the seven point move is categorically better and you know in other parts of the game you, you can you know there's a lot of uh, debate and discussion among top players was maybe this is the best move maybe that's the best move uh, we don't know but uh, you know in Yose well right no in Yose it's uh, it's very mathematical very precise there, there is one best route in Yose to play and uh, almost any other route that you play is uh, going to be worse than that. Now, pl finding that the perfect yose is uh, exceedingly difficult. Uh, professionals will oftentimes make a half point or a one point mistake in their yose play. Interestingly, professionals uh, back in the day, uh, about a few centuries ago, actually played better yose than uh, some professionals today because their games are simply so long. When you have multiple days to play a go game, you can just spend eight hours. Uh, literally, you know, you, you can just spend hours upon hours in Yosei counting everything out to the half point, to the decimal place, to uh, uh, make it perfection. And we, we just don't have games that are that long today. But regardless, we so uh, this lecture is going to be in a... Uh, <laughs> pros are, what would you, how do pros do it? They uh, count very, very quickly. Pros make mistakes. Yeah, pros are not perfect. Uh, they uh, make mistakes. You can uh, often find, oftentimes find, you know, a half point or one point mistakes in uh, professionals, especially if they're in Bio Yomi. But uh, so this lecture is going to be split into a few different parts. The first part is actually going to look at a few uh, uh, common tesages and uh, show why they're better than just playing out the uh, the generic move. And we're going to look at uh, why the test these uh, tesages are particularly effective. So you can start searching for them in your end game. You know, a lot of these Yosei testages are very small testages. They're not big or flashy or, you know, crazy or, or anything like a, a lot of, you know, fighting testages that you'll find. They might only gain you one point here, two points there, but they really, really add up over time. If you know them and your opponent doesn't know them, you can gain a huge number of points in a game with some of these. So we're going to start out looking at these testages, and then we're just going to go dive right in to uh, the math of Yosei, or some might say the calculus of Yosei which is uh, how uh, you uh, calculate. <laughs> um, computers are generally pretty good at Yosei, but oftentimes it's not just a raw math problem. Um, it, it is math, but to, to find the numbers to use in the math requires uh, a little creativity thinking rather than pure, uh, like what computers specialize in, pure quantitative analysis. It requires a, a, a knowledge of gote and sente, things that are a little bit harder to quantify. So computers are generally pretty good at yose, but not perfect by any means. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. And yeah, of course, the, the depth is uh, deep. So we're going to start uh, dashing right into uh, some yose testigy. So this is a pretty common life and death problem. And uh, you know what most people will do and when Yose is coming to a conclusion, assuming most of the rest of the board is done, the player who is uh, black will just uh, play Q19, and then black will play R19, and then uh, Yose will be done. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> if I'm not concentrating, I might also miss this one. But uh, actually, that's not the best move for black. Black actually has a really clever Yose tesiji, which can make white's corner a little bit smaller. Any uh, ideas what black's move is? Yes, Rukus, you can answer. S18. Ah, very nice. Yes. Although I would uh, 
respectfully ask our Don players to allow the uh, Q players to have a shot at answering first. <laughs> so, yes. S18 is the move. And the reason this is better is because if uh, white attempts to do uh, this move at T18, black does this fancy little move. And white has no choice but to capture. <laughs> no worries. Uh, white has to capture. And then black pulls back. And now if we look at the corner, white has made one capture and two points. And two points for a total of three. And it's a one-point reduction. And, you know, you know, it's, it's easy to look at something like this and say, oh, well, it's only one point. But uh, exactly, you know, but uh, one point can really make the difference, you know. Everyone has that game when uh, they lose a game by a half point. Hmm? What's the same? It's, uh, oh, yeah, wait, uh, Black played Gote, yeah. Black played Gote in both places. Right, uh, Black loses Sente in both situations. So yeah, it's Gote either way. Oh, the first was Sente. Right, 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 no, no, no. Yeah, 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 you're right, I'm sorry. So yeah, this is of course assuming that uh, there's nothing else on the board that uh, you need to play that would uh, cause you to want to keep Sente. So yeah, we're just talking about the Tessages themselves to maximize the points locally. Right, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I wasn't clear on that. We're just talking about the Tessages themselves, not in terms of what the best move is considering Yose and Sente on each part of the board. We're, we're, we're going to get to that. But no, excellent point. So this is, uh, this is another interesting, interesting situation that uh, a lot of people will make. Uh, I'm sure the Don players are familiar with the Tessage here. But that a lot of Q players, uh, it amazes them the first time that they see this. There is a really cool Tessage that uh, Black has here to really take a lot of points from uh, White's corner in here. And it's a Yosei Tessage, really. Uh, any ideas, uh, Black, to play in the upper right corner? By all means, volunteer. Ah, S19, excellent. Yes. S19 is the perfect move. Because if white just uh, calmly defends, black gets to play s18, and then white has no choice but to connect here, and then black gets to take n uh, s17, and white has to play here, and uh, black has gained himself uh, a whole corner for himself, which is a uh, pretty nice. If we compare that to uh, the more uh, uh, common move that might occur to someone to play s18, this is a uh, this is clearly better for white than the other variation. Uh, black can take this move, but uh, black's corner is clearly smaller. Well, yeah, white can tanuki, right. We're, we're just talking about uh, better or worse. Now, if white really wants to resist hard, white actually has this move. Yes, there's a very, very severe ko here, but this is a very heavy ko for white. It is very difficult for white. I mean, sure, you know, even if white wins the co, it's not like he gains that much. But if black wins the co, there's a pretty substantial uh, potential gain. So, difficult co for white to fight. Hmm? No, uh, lecture at nine. I don't know, I, I set it to it, the, the GMT, so it's supposed to modify itself, depending on... Uh, <laughs> that wasn't a flaw in the problem. I know that the co is there. Anyway. Alright, so this one is another interesting test of G. So, uh, any ideas here? Uh, well, the, of course, the generic move... This one's fancy. So the generic move for black, of course, is just to play here. And then white plays here. But this actually isn't the best move for black. Any ideas what a better move might be? Anyone? Oh, you all know? So what is it, Rukus? <laughs> Anyone uh, have any ideas? Want to take a shot? Ah, Q19, exactly. Bingo. Q19 is the move. 
Now, if, uh, if white attempts to resist here, this is very foolish for white, because black has this lovely move where he plays r18, and suddenly uh, white stones are, well, half of white stones are dead. You know, white could, if he really wants to live, do this, but this is a horrible, sad, and depressing result that should make white cry. So in actuality, what white should do is play this move at r19. And uh, then now what black can do is play n19. And if we look carefully, white cannot play p19 because that's self-Atari. So white has no choice but to play this move. And then we get an interesting uh, exchange of captures here. Black captures one, and white captures two, and black captures one. And if we compare this to the original result, that is a, uh, no, not that one, that is a, uh, if I can find the darn thing, if you compare this to the uh, original result that is uh, supposed to occur without any tessages, and we compare the two, white is a few points smaller. We In this situation, we have uh, 10 points for white. And in this situation, we have... Uh, seven points for well no both sides have two captures so the the captures cancel out okay yeah but both sides have two captured stones so we can just ignore the captured stones and uh, just count uh, white's raw territory which is uh, seven points yeah three points difference and three points <laughs> I mean most professional games that make it to the end are under three points so this test G you know in and of itself can uh, change the course of your game and it's just, you know, these tiny little things, there are hundreds of these. these. This is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg in terms of these tiny little one or two point testages that are everywhere in games. And God only knows I miss uh, so many of them in my own game still. So, you know, finding these <laughs> ninja sujis, yeah. All right, so these are just uh, some basic testages. And now we're going to get into uh, really the, the bread and butter of uh, this lecture, which is uh, just raw counting and uh, how to count. And so, you know, one of the most confusing things when players really start to study Yose seriously is how to factor in gote, how to factor in sente, how to factor in reverse sente, double sente. How do you factor all these things in to uh, a purely, you know, a pure number? And how do you c compare them against each other? And so the simplest way to do it is to uh, essentially uh, double the value of uh, moves that uh, are either reverse sente or... Uh, uh, basically, uh, to double reverse sente moves. Now uh, we're gonna we're gonna go in that uh, we're we're gonna go into that in more depth in a second, uh, absolutely. But uh, so I, I think it's important to distinguish two point values that we're gonna be talking about. One we could consider uh, the raw the raw point value, which is literally taking your finger and counting one, two, three, four in uh, you know in the situation in, in terms of uh, the point differences. We could, we could consider that the, the raw point totals. But then the second one, we could call the uh, converted point totals. And, you know, the converted point totals uh, attempt to take into account uh, sente, whether the move was sente or gote, and whether they're continuations. Yeah, well, and that's another thing. You know, if you're in Bioyomi, this kind of stuff is really, really hard to do. And so not only is it important to know how to count, but knowing how to count quickly is uh, another critical skill. So let's uh, let's go into the first problem, which is uh, for those of you that uh, I have, we can go to ah. So this is uh, for those of you that I've uh, shown this one to before. Uh, don't answer, but uh, this is a, a fun one that I like to show simply because it really just shows off the power of uh, how big a yose move can be. So when it first, just to go over some basics again, whenever you count a, whenever you try to calculate a yose move, you always compare. Uh, both sides against one another. And so in this case, we will be comparing uh, black playing uh, K2 versus white playing L2. Now, uh, some people might say, well, uh, maybe black will play uh, L2 and uh, descend himself. And uh, that's something absolutely to consider. Um, if we're go if I have uh, another lecture, we can actually go over the, uh, this ho the whole complexity that is uh, whether or not to descend or to, uh, to Hane. That's actually a, an entire lecture <laughs> in and of itself. So, but for, for our purposes, for just doing some basic counting practice, we're going to assume that both players want to Hane here. And, and in this particular case, actually, 
I would say that descending is uh, substantially worse than doing the Hana here. So we are going to be uh, comparing black wanting to play K2 versus white playing uh, L2. And so then we're going to try and calculate what is the difference in uh, the, the point value. How, how much is uh, this move worth? At the end of the day, what is the value? Any ideas? We're all guesses. Take a, take a shot. This move is the move A versus B is worth X. Answer for X. Yes, how much is the move worth? So we have uh, one guess at 10 points. One guess at uh, four points. <laughs> ah, well then it's a good thing we're having this lecture. Ah, 14. One guess at 14. Anyone else? Fire away. Take a, take a wild shot, anyone? We're going to explain it in a second. <laughs> ah, yes. So uh, we're going to talk about that. So 14, 14, 16, 18. Wow, lots of uh, guesses up there. Eight. Good, a bunch of interesting guesses. Okay, let's, uh, let's discuss uh, how to count this exactly. So one of the key concepts that uh, we discussed uh, in the last lecture was a concept called gote with sente continuation. In other words, the, move, the original move itself ends in gote. So in this particular case, if white plays first, L2 is pretty easy to understand. It ends in gote. K2 is a 100% gote move. Black does not need to play another move yet. But uh, one thing that we have to take into account is that... Uh, <laughs> so what, one thing we have to take into account is the continuation, the follow-up. And if we look at M1 right here, it's pretty clear, I think, that uh, white is going to be able to take M1 in sente. So what uh, the, the official way to, or the, the, the proper way that it's usually explained in books to say, is that M1 is white's privilege. To, it, it is the privilege of uh, the white player to take uh, the M1 point, because he can take it in sente. Whereas if black wants to take it, uh, black can only take it in, uh, in gote. Now, in theory, <laughs> now in theory, of course, black could say, "Well, you know, black doesn't like that, so black is just going to immediately play M1." And black could do that, actually. But uh, what do, what does uh, what does this do for white? What has uh, this uh, given white? Right, black is taking it in reverse sente. So this M1 is a very big move, but uh, white got K2 for free. Normally, K2 should be set, should be gote, but it's not here. So the assumption we make in counting, especially when counting these continuations, is that you get the moves that are your privilege. And your privilege moves are moves that you can take in sente, and your opponent cannot take in sente. Because if I can take it in sente, then I could just play it whenever I want, and then play wherever I need to play somewhere else. But if the move is gote, then you have to, you know, spend the initiative to take it. You you can't play where uh, somewhere else that you want to, because then your opponent gets to choose uh, where to play next. So this is a uh, the original uh, situation for white. Uh, naturally for black, the situation is uh, basically the same but reverse. So these two is playing out. Uh, these two is just uh, the first step. But uh, so we also have to take into account the sente continuation. So it is white's privilege to take this uh, M1 move. And so if we play it out, black cannot play N1, of course. He has to play N2. And then white gets this. And black has to play O2. And white gets to take all that in sente and then play somewhere else or wherever else on the board that uh, white feels a need to play. Yeah, Red, we can, that, that, that's a, a whole other interesting topic that we can uh, go into. We're just uh, trying to get the basics down first. So, uh, the converse is true with black. Red, 
please don't confuse everyone. That's a we, we can we can get to that in a bit, but uh, <laughs> but it's uh, it's uh, confusing enough as is. So if black uh, black can take j1 in sente, and uh, this is a pretty easy and expected ending, and if we compare these two end results to one another, and we look at the difference between them. It's pretty substantial. Any idea what the exact difference is? How big is this exactly? <laughs> ah, 14. Yes, 14. So going back to the beginning, we can actually count these moves. We can count white uh, white playing at uh, L2 or black playing at K2 as a 14-point move. Now, if, if you want to be technical, you could say that, OK, well, the move is either 14 points or a few points in sente. Because you know, as we talked about, if black really wants to, he could just play M1 right now and uh, stop white from making those continuations. So if you really want to look at it, you can say, well, white gets either 14 points or, you know, hmm? Right, uh, uh, black, uh, K1 is a, a black follow-up. But uh, we, we, can, uh, we can go into that test G in a second. So, we don't want, we don't really want to focus on this latter case this uh, uh case of uh getting a few points plus sente because you know one of the key rules of yose is if you gain points and you keep sente it's uh, basically an automatic win in at least in yose in that particular local situation anytime you can gain even half a point in sente as long as you're not doing any you know anything horrible like uh doing ajikeshi or any or damaging your other stones, you know, if you can just pure and simple gain points in sente, it's a, it's a generally considered a, a, an automatic success in yose. So we don't even worry about that in terms of a, a continuation. What we worry about is black tanukiing, because maybe black finds a bigger move. You know, sure, maybe L2 as we saw is 14 points, but maybe there's a 16 point move somewhere that uh, black can take. And if that's the case, then uh, white taking L2 would be a mistake. So that's really the one we want to worry about. So this is a, a classic example of a gote with a sente continuation. Let's, uh, let's take a, an example I hope is a little bit simpler to uh, get. So this is a, a pretty basic joseki that I think most people are familiar with. I'm sure many of you have uh, played this in your games before. And uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you haven't, but uh, for the sake of uh, making this simpler, I'm going to uh, add a bunch of stones, simply so the territories are 100% stable, are 100% are solid, and there's no confusion as to, uh, <laughs> and, and so there's no confusion as to just how large the move is. So what we're going to focus on is uh, black playing E2, black playing A, versus uh, white playing B. And so the question now is, uh, how big? Yes, 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 black is over-concentrated. Any ideas? Black A versus white B. How big? We have uh, one guess at 14 points. No, no, take some time, that's fine. No rush. Take some time. Ah, uh, one gets a 12. Another gets a 12. <laughs> All right. Ooh, and the third at 12. Wow, we seem to have a bit of a consensus around this uh, 12. Let's uh, let's see what happens. So if white gets to play first naturally 
This is pretty expected to happen. And so now we have the same situation of uh, Gote with Sente continuation. You know, in theory, Black could say, oh, I'm going to play G1 immediately to stop White. And Black can do that if he really wants to. And sometimes G1 is actually an okay move. If, it's, if there's nothing else bigger, sometimes G1 is just the only move Black can play. But nevertheless, White is thrilled. Right, well, White is uh, thrilled if Black takes this move. Because White has uh, gained a few points with his uh, F2 move, and he's kept Sente. And that's all that really matters. If you can just gain a few points and keep Sente, you can just uh, mark it off in your book as an automatic success. You don't even need to worry about it in terms of counting, at least for now, because you, you just succeeded. What you have to worry about is when Black doesn't nicely respond and uh, desires to play somewhere else. It's that. It's then when you need to see whether or not your move is really the biggest move. So the assumption is that Black uh, is going to play somewhere else and try to play some sort of big move elsewhere on the board, which means you get to add White's uh, Sente continuation to the original Gote move. Now, I'm sure, I hope uh, most of you are familiar with uh, the reason why Black can't do this is because there's a really mean code Tessigy, which uh, Black probably is not going to want to play. Very dangerous for him. So this happens. And this is a pretty standard result, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. So let's, uh, that's, one, that's one side of the equation. Ah, we'll see. <laughs> that is uh, one of the hardest parts about Yosei. Yeah, we, we don't really worry about it, because this is such a heavy co for Black that he's not going to fight it. 99.9% .9 of the time, Black's just not going to fight the co, because it's just way too heavy. So this is the other way. And once again, you know, we have the, the same exact situation, but uh, going the other way. You know, so in theory, White could play E1 immediately and stop Black from taking additional any uh, Sente continuation. But uh, the problem, of course, as uh, we've talked about, is that that allows Black to have taken his uh, E2 move in Sente, which is a, a few point gain for Black and keeping Sente, which, so we don't even need to worry about White playing E1, because if White does, Black is thrilled. Black just says, okay, and now it's Black's turn to play whatever big point he wants to. Black is thrilled if White takes E1. So the assumption for counting is that White does not play E1. White's going to play somewhere else. And so now it's Black's turn, and he gets this as a Sente continuation. And so this is our end result. And let's see if we, uh, no, not that one. If we compare the two of them, what do you guys think? Uh, was the original assessment right? 12 points? Uh, yeah, it was. 12 points was the value of this move. Kind of uh, difficult to see at first glance. But uh, these things are uh, they're very hidden almost in how large they are. Ah, there you go, RJM. That's uh, <laughs> dividing it up. Yeah, so it, it's a uh, one way to look at it, sure. Anyway, let's uh, let's go on to another one. This one is a little. This one is surprisingly complicated to count, even though it looks so simple. I'm sure all of you have had this situation a million times in your games, where Black has this opportunity to capture these two stones that are just floating there. In this particular situation, on uh, the third line. And, you know, you want to ask, well, how big is it? How many points is it really worth to, uh, to take uh, those two stones? Is it just the four points you get for the two stones? Is it more than that? Are there any continuations? There's a lot of factors to take into account. So before we go into uh, how exactly to count this, I, uh, let's uh, take some uh, educated guesses. Uh, do some attempts of your own. How much is uh, black uh, 018 worth? Of course, White's move would be P19. Feel free to take some time, Rad. <laughs> so let's see, we have uh, one guess at eight points, but no, let's, uh, let's wait for some more answers. We'll have one guess at... Good! More people are speaking up. Come on. We have uh, more than four players in the room, I know. One guess at seven points. Good. Anyone else want to volunteer? No, 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 no. Keep, keep counting. 10, 
Ah, well, Rukus, that's a, that's a whole new question. What do you mean, how would White play it? He would place the stone on the point, I would imagine. Well, no, no, White's not going to play P19 in response. Uh, we have uh, one guess at six. Uh, more points, but a loss of Sente. We have a uh, guess at five. Good. All right. Let's uh, do the uh, exact counting. By the way, just so everyone knows, everyone is wrong. <laughs> uh, the correct answer is 10 points. Let's, uh, let's see why it's 10 points, though. <laughs> Oh, Merrick got it? Really? I didn't see. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, let's compare the two. So, Black takes this move, and then the question is, uh, well, what follow-ups are there? Well, White cannot take O19 in Sente, because Black has this lovely move at P19. By the same token, Black cannot take N19 as Sente because White can just play M19. And if Black wants to make any use of his N19 stone, he has to go back. So now we're going to go into statistics for a second. Okay? So basically, this is what we call a gote gote situation from here. It is, it is you know, 50% chance that each side will get their move because it is gote for each side. There is a 50% chance that... Uh, White will take O19 and end like this. And there is a 50% chance that Black will take N19 and end like this. And so when it's a 50-50 shot like this, you can just uh, basically compromise between the two of them for purposes of counting. And the easy assumption you can make is that uh, Black takes this and White takes this which basically averages out the two, uh, the two possible situations, which is a great, great tool for uh, counting. So black uh, taking 018 is gote, and it is expected that uh, this will be the final result. And if we count, it just uh, from including this uh, line of squares upwards, including the squares themselves, Black in this upper right area has for himself, what, 9, 12, 16, 17, uh, 9, uh, 12, plus 4, so 16 points for black in this upper right area. By comparison, white has, just uh, in this little local area, we'll say 7. So let's remember these two numbers. Black 16, white 7. What if white plays P19 after... O oh, eighteen. What do you mean? Why would White ever play P nineteen? That's just bad. Then you just do this. Black doesn't need to play O oh, nineteen. Just do this. There's uh, there's no reason not to. I mean, you could do this, I suppose. This is fine too. No, 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 Rukus. No, you give up too many points for it. And N19 gives you so little that it's not worth it. No, no, that uh, P19 is not a move. So this is a uh, situation one with a uh, black taking the stone. Let's uh, let's uh, consider white now. White plays first, and white's proper move is P19. Now this is actually a very common mistake that uh, we have here as uh, the player who is black. What is a uh, black's proper move here? Any ideas? Black to play proper Yose in response to P19? Whoa! <laughs> Such a simple situation, and we have three different answers in the first three guesses. Jeez, a little bit of controversy. A few guesses at P18, guess at O18. Man. So, the uh, correct answer actually is Q19. And the reason for this being is because of Sente. Now, it's true that white can gain slightly more than, uh, than uh, he would if uh, black pushed in first, but black keeps Sente here. 
and Sente is an incredibly valuable resource. So this uh, Q8, Q19 is a bit superior. But, uh, you know, once again, let's, uh, let's do the same thing we did last time and uh, count. So remember, last time it was uh, black hat 16, uh, white hat 7. Wait, why is P18 not good? Because, okay, so let, let, let's, uh, let's see. Black plays uh, P19 and white plays here. And then uh, what do you do as black? Do you just Tanuki here as black? Okay, you can Tanuki if you want, but you're just throwing away extra points. I don't know why uh, uh, you, you would uh, like this. It's just, it seems like you're throwing away extra points. See, it's uh, it's two points worse, and uh, white loses. Uh, yeah, white loses two points as well. I mean, I okay, so they both lose two points, but I guess I would still consider this uh, slightly better for white. Mm. I, I guess I would consider it, can still consider it slightly better for white simply because of the co-threats that he might get compared to uh, black having co-threats. But uh, yeah, no, you're right. They're, they're, they're mostly the same. They're mostly the same, I guess. But the, the, the proper move that you will find in Go books is uh, Q19. I, uh, I absolutely assure you that uh, you will find Q19 in Go books as the proper choice in this kind of situation. So, let's uh, uh, go back to uh, this situation and do some counting. And so, last time we saw that it was 16 points for black and 7 points for white. Oops. Let's, uh, let's see what we have this time. So, this time, uh, white has a himself uh, a few more points up to 10 and black has 9 points down from 16 so black has just lost 7 points and white has gained himself 3 points making it a 10 point move and you know what's scary about professional players is it's one thing to be able to do these calculations when you know you have a few minutes and you can do the math and you can just write it out you know I, I think I could play pretty fairly decent you'll say if I had enough time but what's scary about professionals when they do this is they can just look at the board and make a snap decision that this is worth 10 points yes and, and that's what's terrifying with professionals is that they can just you know glance at the board and see how big a Yosei move is like this this isn't this is not complex at all in the realm of uh, uh, counting Yosei. This is like uh, the ABCs in uh, Yosei counting. There are many things that uh, I still have to learn <laughs> in uh, some of the more advanced aspects, but uh, let, let's move on. Let's see. Ah! <laughs> this is a... This is a situation that we uh, basically looked at before in terms of that fun little test -ity. Uh I told you we'd get a chance to take a look at it. So, uh, can uh, someone help us out? What is uh, what is Black's Tessigy here that uh, he has? Rather than just a generic move like Q19, which is not the best Yosei move, what is the Tessigy for Black? Yes, Rukas? Feel free to answer. Ah, 018 isn't a bad idea. Almost. But uh, White can manage to capture it like this. So, not quite the Tessigy. Yes, P19 is the Tessigy. And the reason being, if white attempts to capture it, suddenly white is low on liberties. And black can do this. And bad things happen to white. So, that's why P19 is such a cool Tessigy. And white's response to it is N18. And then black pulls back here, and then white finishes off here. And now you you can make a, a now some players of course can say that well does white really have to play o eighteen well right o, o nineteen hmm you can't o nineteen in response immediately oh I mean you can it's basically the same the the result is identical both ways the reason why players uh play uh n eighteen in response is that uh, sometimes white can tanuki here, 
But the key for black is not to play uh, p19 until he can take it in sente. Hmm? Can you do that? I don't think you can, because then white just does that. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, they're basically the same. It's just a, a subtle difference. But uh, generally speaking, we would expect uh, this result to happen. So then the question becomes, how big a move is P19? And feel free to take some time. I want to hear as uh, many guesses as possible from as uh, many people as possible. And please allow the Q players to take a shot at answering first. <laughs> See, we have uh, one guess at three, one guess at eight. We always compare. No, 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 not the the regular move is a horrible move that we don't even want to uh, look at. We are comparing black p19 against white playing white's mo proper move, which is q19. So, uh, yeah, I, I didn't make that clear. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're comparing white's proper move, which we always do is q19. Ah, we have someone saying six, someone at two, eight, three, six, four. Wow. See, it's a three. Yeah, all all over the board. <laughs> all over the map. All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, I think that's a, a good chunk of guesses. Let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, the actual value. So, the correct answer is three points, but in cente. So, you can actually consider it in terms of converted points. You can actually call it six points. So yeah, calling it three points or three points in sente is correct, or six points is is also a, a fair uh, assessment of the value. I prefer to personally call it six points simply because that way it just uh, wait. Why did I contradict myself? Three points in sente or six points. I don't think that's contradicting myself. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. If it's sent it, then it's a success. Okay. By you know, I, I'm saying that in terms of uh, no, in terms of when you're looking at follow-ups. I, I I didn't make that clear. I, I didn't make that clear. Yeah, no. When you're looking at follow-ups in terms of uh, continuation moves, you don't need to worry about uh, uh, the exact counting. Ah. That's a good point, but this is reverse sente. White Q19 is reverse sente. Because uh, black can take P19 in sente. So uh, Q19 is a move that we can evaluate at uh, six points. Yeah, I know Yose is really, really confusing. And I try, I really do. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, just a stupidly confusing subject. Um, but uh, this particular problem, actually, I took this one out of uh, Get Strong at Endgame. And uh, they say it's uh, three points in Sente or six points. So uh, they had a, a pro wrote that one. So you can argue with him. But uh, <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I enjoy Yose. I really do enjoy it. It's, uh, you know, teasing out every single point. Yeah, I exactly, RJM. Right, right, right. So, in, yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was not particularly clear when I said that you don't need to worry about it. That was, per that was specifically for these, uh, these follow-ups and why you don't have to worry about uh, your opponent uh, stopping you from making your Sente follow-up. That, that was uh, particularly referring to these Gote with Sente continuation moves. So my apologies, I wasn't clear. So in the, yeah, whoops, that wasn't good. So yeah, Q, Q19 can be considered a six point move because it stops your opponent from making a three point move in sente. And as we talked about in the last lecture, if it's a sente move, you can essentially double its value for our purposes, which is a great estimation tool. And this is this whole concept of converted points that I was talking about. You're, you're taking this, the fact that it, Black's move was sente, you're taking that into account in your calculation of uh, white, the value of White's move. If P19 for Black was not sente, this would be a vastly differently valued move. If Black could not play P19, 
this would be a far smaller move. No, P th three points in reverse sente is not bigger than a 10 point gote. Uh, three points in reverse sente is about six points. So it would be bigger than a five point gote move. Well, red, yeah, you know, you can say, oh, well, it depends on how many moves are left on the board. But for our purposes, no, 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 reverse sente move is a move that is gote itself, but it actually takes away your opponent's potential sente move. So in this particular case, a Q19, Q19 is a reverse sente move. Itself is a gote move. Black doesn't need to, black can just play wherever he likes, but it stops black from playing P19, which is a sente move. Because, ah, uh, an excellent question. Because not only do you count the three points that are gained with this, you also count the fact that uh, black loses what should have been his sente. And that sente will, in theory, have gotten black another three-point move. It, assuming, of course, that, uh, that both sides are playing proper yose. Now, you know, it, once you get up to really uh, advanced yose thinking, there's all sorts of uh, ways to make it more exact than just pure doubling it. But for our purposes, until you reach stronger than me, uh, you don't need to worry about uh, doing anything else besides doubling. <laughs> Uh, you know, nobody, uh, I'm perfectly happy doubling, and it uh, works great. So, let's uh, move on to the next one. Ah, this is a classic situation. So, question here is, uh, black's move naturally is uh, P19, and white's move naturally is uh, Q19. So, we're comparing them against one another. Black P19 versus White Q19. This is a situation that appears all the time in games. I'm sure all of you have had this a trillion times. So then the question is, how big? Why Black pay P19? What, what do you mean? What else would Black play? What else would Black play besides P19? Oh, no, no, no. Rukus, Rukus. Listen, this is, this is a great, great point to look at. Just everyone remember this. Never, ever play O18. It is not a good move. It is not a testigy. It is a bad move. It is a move that which will make players scold you for playing. Don't play it. Because, yes, you can gain one more point by playing it. Yes, it looks fancier and makes me feel smarter. Therefore, it is a superior move. You can reduce white by one more point by taking it, but you end in gote. And 99.999% of the time, making him lose that one point is not worth losing sente for. So, in that exceedingly rare instance when you cannot gain a single point with your sente, maybe you can play 018. But if that happens once in your entire go career, I will be astounded. So, going back to the original question, I'd love uh, to hear uh, anyone who'd like to take a shot at it. What is uh, the valuation? Black P18 versus white Q19. Let's see, we have three, we have five points, we have ten points. Wow, all over the map. Five in cente, that's, that's good. Five in cente. So you, you, can, you can say either, or you can say five in, if, you, if your guess is five in cente, you can say five in cente or ten. If your guess is four in cente, you can say four in cente or eight. Both are acceptable and correct uh, uh, ways of uh, accounting. I usually convert it to just, I usually convert four in cente to eight, simply so we're comparing apples to apples with uh, gote versus cente moves. So that, that's just my personal preference, but uh, both are technically accurate. Ah, so I think we're uh, improving. This is uh, good. We have a lot of people who are answering correctly. Yes, five points in cente is the correct answer. Or ten points, right. Five points in cente slash ten points is correct. So good job. Oh, yeah, funny. <laughs> no, that, that's, uh, that's uh, also fine. You can divide Gote by two instead. It's uh, perfectly acceptable. It's obviously, you know, mathematically the exact same thing. So, no, it, it's uh, perfectly acceptable. So this is, of course, what happens uh, if black plays first. And this, of course, is what happens when white plays first. 
And if we uh, compare our two results uh, against one another, whoops, not that one. As soon as I can find it, <sighs> if uh, we uh, compare our two against one another, there is a uh, five point difference. All right, good. So this was a pretty simple one. Let's uh, let's go on to the next one. Ah, this is another one that uh, comes up all the time in players' games. I'm sure all of you have seen this trillions of times. This little one stone capture a day, and both players want it. And you know, then there's that follow up at S19, which just looks so stupidly complicated to count. And so then the question is, how big is both sides? This time they have the same move. You know, black wants to uh, capture, or black wants to play Q18, and white wants to play Q18. So the question is, what is uh, the valuation of uh, black taking Q18 versus white taking Q18? <laughs> so take some time, think, and uh, I'd love to hear some guesses. But yeah, feel free to uh, take a few seconds. I mean, uh... whoa, all over the map. Yeah, this one is harder than the than uh, the last one. The last one was uh, relatively easy. This one is uh, moving up in difficulty. It's uh, surprising. Even simple situations can be stupidly complicated to uh, to count in Yose. Yeah, no, take a second. We're we're not going anywhere. Take uh, take a few seconds. I'll be waiting for another 30, 45 seconds to uh, hear additional answers. This one is uh, more complicated than the others, and you shouldn't be expected to be able to answer it in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, problems like these <laughs> 20. Wow, 20? Really? Darn. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think 20 is right. <laughs> Sticking with eight. We have uh, numbers all over the board. Ah, six, nine, twelve, nine thousand, nine, ninety thousand and one. Wow, that's ninety thousand, ninety thousand and one point move. I, I would like to play that move. All right, uh, anyone else bring in uh, your guesses before uh, the buzzer? <laughs> All right, the correct answer to the problem is uh, now this one is actually yes, 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 Rugus, Dragon Ball Z reference, very funny. But uh, so this one is actually a lot harder to calculate exactly. We can say that this is a uh, about seven points. You know, in theory, you can calculate this one exactly, but in reality, it's incredibly difficult. So we will call this one uh, seven points. Yeah. Exactly. There's so many follow-ups. But uh, let's look at the, the basic situation. And, you know, for our purposes, if you're within a half point of getting it right, then you're, you're fine. You know, if you say 7, if you say 8, 8 is also acceptable. But uh, for our purposes, if you can, uh, say, if you can get that, that's, uh, that's right. 7.5 is, is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so white's move, of course, is here. And then black plays here. And then white plays here. Well, right. That's uh, that's the tricky part. So this is, of course, uh, basically the end here. And then the expected uh, continuation from here usually is uh, this is usually what is uh, expected to follow up. So that's uh, what happens if white takes it. If uh, black takes it, now this is a 100% gote move. White is under no obligation to play S19 immediately. And so this creates an interesting situation. But uh, it's uh, whoever gets S18 is basically uh, 
two-point difference either way. And uh, since it's Gothe for both sides, we, we basically count it as this, this situation in S19. That there's a bunch of uh, really complicated math that you can do if you really want to hurt your brain. But uh, for our intents and purposes, uh, you can just consider this uh, two points as uh, this, S, this, S, this type of uh, S19 move. You can uh, just count it as two points, that particular part of it. So what we have here is black has essentially gained, we can say, uh, two points and uh, maybe a third, uh, questionable whether Q19 is really a point. We can say two to two and a half points plus this uh, potential two points here, this uh, two point S19 situation, which we don't know which side it'll go to. That's about uh, four points. And then if we look at the other side of the equation, we have white gaining himself uh, one uh, and then one for the capture, so two, and then three points. So three points for here is white, uh, two points for black, and also the two points that uh, S19 we can consider S19 being worth makes it about seven points. But this is one of those problems that it's uh, particularly difficult to count exactly simply because of the weirdness of the 2-1 point. You know, magic happens at the 2-1 point, and the 2-1 point also makes Yosef stupidly difficult to uh, count. This is why the computers have yet to perfect Yosef, because of uh, situations like uh, S19. So uh, let's, uh, let's go on to the next one. It's a little bit easier. Ah, this one's good. I really like this one. So, I'm sure that this situation has happened to many of you, many times. Oh, you have a cheat sheet? Really? Can I have one of those? I'd like a Yosei cheat sheet. Those are pretty cool. So, we have ourselves this situation. And uh, the question, of course, for Black is uh, Black wants to take a R18. So, Black takes R18 versus uh, White taking S19. So it's uh, A versus B. What is the difference in points? And go. We have a good, uh, I'll give it a good uh, 30, 45 seconds at least. You can take some time to count, you know. It's not a race. We're not uh, counting immediately. Really? You counted it immediately? Oh, that's pretty impressive. Oh, well, good for you. But uh, let's uh, let's wait for uh, a few more guesses to uh, roll in before we uh, explain this one. Oh, we have uh, another one at seven. We have one at five. Yet another at seven. A six. <laughs> Another seven, eight, and get a five. Good, a lot of guesses, but uh, you know what, what I'm really liking is that we're all in the same general area, which I think is uh, really important, showing that you know we're all getting a, a basic grasp of uh, how these things are counted, and you know even if you don't get it exactly right. If uh, you know you're still in, uh, if you're a, a Q player and you're counting, you know within one or two points, that's uh, still superb. So, the correct answer to this problem is seven points. It is a seven-point problem. So, congratulations. <laughs> Don't worry, you were pretty close. So. Of course, black will take this, and this will happen. And uh, if we uh, compare it, white, of course, will just uh, take this. And so in this situation, white has uh, three points that he doesn't have in the other situation. R18, of course, does not count as a point, because black can force him to fill it, 
you know, once all the, the, the Dame is filled, so obviously that doesn't count. These three points of whites disappear in the other variation. So uh, then not only do those points disappear, but uh, black himself gains uh, one, two, and then this S18 point counts as two points. So one, two, three, four. Yes, I'm recording this. It'll be posted on uh, YouTube. Q19 instead of Q18 possible. Mm. Let's see. Oops. Mm. No, not really. Because black will still just do this. Uh, sure, you can do that if you like. That's fine. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do this right now because black will get a Q18 first. So, seven points. So, we are, only have a, a few more left. Ah, this one I really like. And this one might... Uh, so I'm sure this has happened to many of your games, that someone has this stone sticking out, uh, descending to S19 or something similar, and they just want to crawl into your territory at uh, R19. And the question is, what, uh, what is that kind of situation worth? And so, uh, yeah. Uh, let's, perhaps the Don players will allow the Q players to answer before they answer this time, which would be very nice of them. Um, and so, uh, yeah, take some time. Uh, think about it, and uh, let me know. Uh, yes, this is a reverse sente situation. Yes. Yes, white taking R19 is reverse sente. Absolutely. Good observation. Yes, so you can either double or just say in sente. Both are uh, acceptable ways for counting. My personal preference, as I've said, is doubling, simply to make it apples-to-apples -apples comparison with uh, Gote and Sente moves, but uh, some people don't like to do that. And so you can just say, you know, whatever in Sente. Uh, Rukus, no, you don't count as a Don, Rukus. You can answer. I'm sure you have an answer, but let's uh, let's wait for a few more guesses before uh, our, our uh, beloved Don players uh, give us their wisdom. So we have uh, a few guesses at 10, 12, this 10 to 12 range. I uh, guess at 5. 5 and Sente. 10. <laughs> no worries. Anyone else? Go in once before Don players answer. Go in twice. Go in three times. All right, Don players. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, well, uh, congratulations. Uh, the three of you are correct. It is seven points in Sente slash 14 points. Yes, that is 100% correct. This uh, should not be difficult for Don players to answer. Yes, uh, if you're a Don player... You should be getting. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's uh, you'll say is stupidly complicated. Do not expect to get these right, unless you're a Don player, in which case you should be getting these right. So this is basically expected to happen. And then black goes there. <laughs> That's just my little revenge for you guys answering early. Don't worry. And this is expected to happen. And then later on in the game. It, what we can say is it is black's it is basically black's privilege to take uh, Q18. It is uh, generally assumed that black will be able to take Q18 because white taking Q18 is 100 percent as a uh, hundred percent uh, gote, whereas uh, black taking Q18 at least has uh, some sente potential. So that that that's just uh, minor stuff. But yeah, it's assumed that this will happen later on in the game because it might be too small right now. And if we look at this. Let's see how many stones difference we have. He has been reduced one, two, three, four, uh, oops, uh, five, six. Oh, that doesn't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These uh, seven points are gone out of White's territory, which would be White's territory if White had a stone at R19. And since it's in uh, Black, can take this in Sente. 
Yeah, Q17. <laughs> and since black can take this in uh, sente, we can either call it 7 points in sente or 14 points, both of which are perfectly acceptable. All right, so uh, second to last problem, and then at the end, I'm going to have a doozy of a problem uh, specifically for the Don players, although uh, our Q players are more than welcome to uh, attempt to answer it as well. <laughs> Yeah, well, the Yosei is a, a very complicated topic. So, in this kind of situation... <laughs> so, this situation, first of all, before we even consider counting, the first question is, what is White's proper Yosei move here? Someone who's not a Don player, I thought that was a... I thought we, we, we grasped that it, Don players should not answer like that. <laughs> no, 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 not this one. Next one. This one's, this one's not a Don problem. Come on. No. This one's not a Don problem. <laughs> no worries, no worries. It's all good. So yeah, R19 is really tempting. But black can play this, and uh, it uh, becomes less good for black. Well, yeah, you can play with S19, but uh, still the problem, of course, is this move and white has to fill this move at the end. And so that's why we generally consider this problematic to play as white. This is uh, actually the uh, the uh, Honte proper move. Well, remember, if white gets this, he gets a R19 in Sente as a Sente continuation. So... Yeah, it's a tiny sente follow-up at uh, R19, but it is a sente follow-up, and it's uh, worth counting. So the question becomes now, what is the value? Both players want the Q19 point. White Q19 versus Black Q19. And please allow our uh, Q players to uh, take a shot at it first. Feel free to take some time to think. Both sides want uh, Q19 as their point. And then our down players will uh, answer shortly afterward. See, we have a I guess at uh, six, three, five, <laughs> and uh, any more uh, Q players want to take a shot? Uh, going once, Q in twice, three times. <laughs> all right, our, uh, all right, Don players, what are uh, what are your uh, assessments, Don players? Six points, Sente, twelve points. Uh... Whoa, where where do you where where do you get the the reverse Sente in this one? I uh, well, I mean reverse Sente. Where do you get the double value in this one? <laughs> Well, sure, black won't respond, but there's no doubled value, I don't think. No, black won't respond to Q19, absolutely not. But uh, I don't think there's doubled value. Ah, still lots of debate. You guys want to see the answer? All right, let's uh, take a look at this uh, answer for ourselves. So, just to get it out of the way, the correct answer is actually four points. Is the correct answer. Four points. <laughs> okay. So. So. To look at it, first off, uh, if white gets the move, well, it's, uh, let, let's, uh, let's look. So white gets the move, 
and black does not play r19. That, that would be very silly of black. So it is assumed that white will get the, R, uh, the r19 move. That's the assumed continuation. So, in... Uh, ah, yes, the r19 is a... Uh, well, bl why does black... Black doesn't need to go r19. There's no reason to. <laughs> so this is uh, the one final result to look at. But now the, one, the more interesting one is the other final result to uh, go look at. So when uh, black initially, oops, when black initially plays uh, Q19, this is a 100% Gote move by itself. White has no need or desire to play any move immediately, but it has a Sente follow-up. P19, of course, is a very Sente follow-up. White has to play here, and then at the end of the game, it is expected that uh, black will have a stone here, and white will have a stone here. Or O oh, nine, yeah, you can argue it's the same. You, we're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna argue that. It's the exact same thing. Okay, so if we compare the two, black has made his territory one point larger, and white has lost himself one, two, three points. Thus, value, uh, evaluating this move at uh, four points. It's amazing how something uh, so small can uh, be so complicated to, uh, ah, <laughs> yeah, Gote versus Sente, you know, trying to figure out white responses is very difficult. All right, so last problem, last uh, problem of the night is a incredibly basic problem, and some of you may have actually been taught this just from memory, but uh, to see, I want to see if anyone can actually figure this out through calculation. Yeah, last one. We we're uh, we're in, uh, about uh, seventy-five minutes into it. Oh, you know this one? Oh, some people already know this one. Darn. Oh well, I'll have to figure out a different one. All right. So yeah, you spoiled the answer. So uh, I'll uh, I will uh, let's see. I will pull a Yosei problem out of my head and uh, figure that out. So, well, okay. So this is a problem that, uh, okay, well, wait. This is a, uh, actually, it's about 16 and a half points. So if you're saying 15 points, you're actually a little bit off. But uh, to actually calculate it out is a stupidly, stupidly complicated thing. I will try, and we will work on it. But uh, just remember that this is moving into uh, somewhat more advanced mathematics. So hopefully all of you took uh, some statistics courses in college. So let's. Uh, we're, this is multiple layers deep of s continuations, both Gote and Sente, because we have a very incomplete position. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need at least uh, discrete structures to uh, in differential equations to uh, take a look at this. <laughs> right, so first of all, we're going to assume for this uh, Yosei problem that neither side taking S17 is going to threaten the overall life of the group. Okay, so we're assuming that both sides' groups, you know, this is not a life and death problem. That's one of the key assumptions that we're going to make. And sometimes that's not the case, but you have to look at it on a case by case basis. But for our purposes, life and death is not an issue. You know, just capturing one stone is not going to cause life or death problems for the rest of the stones. And just to be clear on that. So, let's look at the first moves. Obviously, black's move is S18, S17, and obviously, white's move is S17. And I'm sure many of you have learned that this is a really, really big move, but the, the reasoning why it is worth uh, slightly over 16 points is a little bit more complicated. I'll try and uh, shed some light on it. So, White's, so let's uh, let's take a look at the white's move first because it's a little bit easier to deal with. So S17 by itself is a gote move. Now if black does respond, well, white is thrilled. White just goes like this, and you know then white can just play elsewhere. And white is thrilled. You know if white can get S17 in sente, he should play it every single time. So the follow-up for white is important. The follow-up is not usually S18 rather than R18 because in this case the monkey jump is devastating. 
and uh, if you if you time this properly, 99% of the time, black will need to respond to this move. We can uh, we can assume that uh, s18 as a general rule is going to be sente as long as you play it and time it properly. And then of course white gets this r19 move in sente. So this all is just this one sente continuation that uh, white gets. So uh, if we uh, look at this, well, there's always hypothetical, and you'll say yes. You, you, and you, you have to have some hypothetical. You'll say it's impossible otherwise. So if we look at this result, we can uh, say that uh, white has for himself, uh, if we include these points at uh, S and T11, we will say that uh, white has 13 points in his corner. Uh, in comparison, we can say that uh, black has, as a, as a general rule, we could say that uh, black has, uh, well, calling 17, we will say that black has 5 points. So, we can say white 13 and black 5. And let's uh, keep those numbers in mind as uh, we look at the other side of the puzzle because the other side of the puzzle is substantially more complicated and so you may get lost and I do apologize for that but it's just a stupidly complicated problem to count out and there's no real easy way to explain it. So the other side of the puzzle is a bit more complicated. Black gets this move and this move of course is Gote by itself. There's no unless you know remember we're assuming that White's group is not in life or death danger of dying. Right, the S15 follow-up, which is right, but we're assuming that White's overall group is not in a life-or-death situation where he must have S16 to make eyes. So in that situation, S17, black S17 is 100% gote. There is no logical reason why White has to respond to it. So, white, so black gets a continuation, but the key to remember here is that black's continuation is gote. S15 is a large move, but it's a gote continuation. So then, we now have to calculate how to calculate in a gote continuation. So this uh, continuation, there is a 50% chance that this continuation will occur. And this gote continuation itself has a sente continuation, which is like this. But uh, this uh, this added gain there is only a 50% uh, chance that uh, all of this added gain will occur. It is a 50% chance likelihood that uh, this will occur, and there's a 50% chance likelihood that, uh, going back for a moment, there's also a 50% chance likelihood that white will get this move. And if white gets this move, white will be able to take this in sente. So now going back to statistics, it is 50% likely that this will happen, and it is 50% likely that this will happen. And so basically, for uh, purposes of uh, simplifying, we can uh, essentially, uh, uh, when we're looking at this side of the puzzle, we can count, uh, we can basically cut the uh, uh, value in half of, uh, of uh, how much uh, the gain in loss is. But let's, uh, let's count it out exactly, actually, just to, to make it extra clear. So in this side, we will call this... Uh, We'll call this uh, B. Uh, or we'll call this one A. You know, this is variation A of Black's continuation. You know, Black taking S17. This is variation A of it. And in variation A, which has a 50% chance likelihood, White has nine points, and Black has. Er, let's see. Yeah, that's not a real point. Uh, yeah, I, no, 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 I took out P17 at the last moment. It was only, uh, five points. Oops, uh, this one. Yeah, I took out P17. So, in this case, which has a 50% chance of likelihood of happening, uh, white has, uh, nine points for himself, and, uh, black has, uh, 11 points for himself. One sec. So, uh, let's uh, take a look at the other half. Uh, in this one, 
once again, uh, uh, looking at the, uh, the same numbers, white only has uh, two real points that uh, we can say are his for sure. But uh, black, on the other hand, has himself 15 points. So these are each of these, this, this 9 versus 11 and 2 versus 15, each of them are 50% uh, likely of being the outcome of uh, black having a, uh, oh, right, 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 16, 16, my apologies. Yeah, I see it's so easy to make a mistake. I missed the capture. You're right. So it's uh, 9 versus 11 compared to uh, 2 versus 16. And so in essence, this is a, uh, what, uh, 7 plus uh, 5. This is a 12-point difference. If we look at the difference in white points and then difference in black points, it is a 12-point difference. However, we are actually going to only count this as a, a little bit less than, uh, we're, we can't count it as the full 12 points because uh, it's, a go it's two gote moves in a row. So we're actually going to uh, average this out to uh, about, uh, if we average the 9 and the 2, we are going to get ourselves to about uh, 5 and a half. And if we average the uh, 11 and the 16, we're going to get ourselves about uh, 13 and a half. And so uh, this, uh, right, we're averaging them together because each of them is a 50% chance likelihood of happening. So we can say that on average, white will have 5.5 points and black will have 13.5 points when black takes S17. And so now that we've averaged the two of those together, we get to compare those to our original two numbers of white 13 points and black 5 points. And so when we compare those to one another, we get uh, 7.5 plus uh, 8.5. Right, exactly. Good old, you know, you can take it all from poker. Uh, 7.5 and... Uh, 8.5, if uh, my math is correct, and 7.5 plus 8.5 is 16, which is why we can evaluate this to be 16 points. Now, if you didn't follow all of this, that's perfectly fine. Most sane individuals don't um, the first eight times they hear it, so don't worry if you can't. Uh, <laughs> the main thing to remember is, uh, yeah, 16 points is right. Yeah, so the main thing to remember is uh, just uh, for our purposes that uh, going back to the beginning S17 is really 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 big Yosei it is worth 16 points in general and yeah Red we can uh, we can uh, debate all the various codes so uh, just to conclude this uh, was just uh, you know as complicated as this lecture was this is honestly just the basics we're just getting our feet this is just getting our feet wet in terms of uh, counting in Yosei. As Red liked to bring up throughout the lecture, there are all sorts of ways that we can make counting even more complicated by attempting to take into account Ko's and uh, taking into account uh, all sorts of uh, <laughs> uh, all sorts of uh, other factors that can make it even more complicated. There are hundreds of one to two point yeah, <laughs> there are hundreds of one to two point tesiji that exist out there and being able to calculate in a game you know complex unfinished situations and counting them especially when you've never seen them in Bioyomi is just stupidly complicated so uh, this uh, sums up uh, part two of the Yosei lecture um, I don't know exactly what the lecture for next week will be but if uh, anyone has uh, ideas feel free to shoot me a line always up for suggestions but uh, yeah, despite the complexity and the potential boringness of the topic, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves, learned a little bit about Yosei. If you just follow these basic rules, and even if you don't count exactly, just try and use them generally to estimate, even if you're a few points off, that's fine. As long as you can use them to estimate, you know, you, you take a six-point move, and then your opponent takes a two-point move, and you take a seven-point move, and then your opponent takes a three-point move, and you know, you do that three or four times in your game, and you're going to make back 15 to 20 points. I mean, I can just say on a personal level, when I play, uh, uh, you know, uh, like six stone games, I can easily expect uh, usually a 20 point gain in uh, Yosei with uh, six stone games. And, uh, you know, if you're concentrating on Yosei and your opponent isn't, it's amazing. It's amazing the number of points that you can gain because a lot of players just don't even care. They just blow through it thinking it's meaningless. 
and it's really not. It's incredibly meaningful. <laughs> depends, depends. But uh, yeah, I hope everyone learned something. I will, uh, I will uh, hope to see you at the next lecture, and uh, feel free to shoot me your ideas. But uh, yeah, thank you all for coming.